We all know puzzle games have quite innovative and like complex game mechanics, right? Uh, one of these puzzle games uh, is the upcoming Robot Detour. Uh, its main mechanic is all about uh, pulling a wire all around the level. Um, and how exactly that works uh, will be explained today by our next speaker, Ivan Bushmin. He's here today to tell us everything about it. Thank you. First of all, thank you for coming. It's cool to see that there are non-zero people that are, came to such a cryptic titled uh, presentation. So yeah, my name is Ivan. Uh, today I'll be giving a talk about a cool game mechanic I'm implementing in Godot. Uh, I've actually been learning Godot for less than a year, so probably I'm less experienced than most of you are. Uh, but I'm still very excited to show you what I have today. So for the next 20 minutes, I want to give you the joy of creating a cool puzzle mechanic without actually the need to spend an unimaginable amount of development time on bugs and stuff like that, because I already did that. Um, oh, and after a couple of talk revisions, I decided to go without any code at all, but at the end of the talk, I'll still give a link to the code if you want to look at it yourself, how it works, stuff like that. Okay. Um, let's start about let's, let's talk about the mechanic we want to dissect today. So imagine you are a robot on a wire that's connected to the charger. Um, you can move freely around, but uh, your wire can interact with the environment and also with enemies. So you need to carefully choose your path, how you go uh, to reach your goal safely. What you see right now is actually not the final game. It's uh, Ludum Dare, like game jam version, made in three days. Uh, and uh, this will be the first part of the talk. I'll discuss how I implemented this first iteration of this game, mm, like uh, steps I took, how to implement them, and even several problems I came along the way. Uh, but you've probably seen this mechanic in some of games or another, others even like in Worms have this like grappling hook that kind of also interacts with the environment. So um, is next. Next, <laughs> next part of the talk, we'll talk about more complex interactions when we have also moving environment. It's just uh, like demo thing. It's not like actual puzzle doesn't look like this. <laughs> uh, it's just like to show the like uh, uh, how engine works, something like that. Um, okay, uh, let's begin with something nice and simple: static environment. Um, so I'll just start with saying out loud what we want to achieve here. Um, it's so I have GIFs for or GIFs or whatever uh, for all of my all, almost all of my slides, so it's easier to understand what's going on. And actually, it's much easier to like to look at the picture and like try to say out loud what we want to achieve. So first of all, you can see that charger and robot are connected with a line. I'm using line 2D for it, but it's just like encoded is just an array of points. So but. Maybe it's easier to think about line 2D in that way. <laughs> um, then we want to somehow detect the, when this line 2D, or I'll just call it, call it wire, when it touches corners. And we want to probably add new points to the wire so it bends around the corners. Um, and we also want to unsnap from corners. Maybe we don't know yet what in code language it means, but we know it, you, you can feel it, right, when why I shouldn't snap from the corner. So we'll try to analyze and like verbalize how it should work in code later. Uh, also, I, you, see, you can see I've left a couple of spoilers. Let it be a surprise for us. Those are a couple of technical problems will come along the way. Uh, but wait, you could also say, uh, why don't you just use some like physics, for example, for that? Well, um, I also had that idea, of course, but just you could imagine some GIF with like wire j jittering around, like lagging, stuff like that. Uh, I'm making a puzzle game and I really wanted for wire to be like controllable and predictable to like uh, that user could always like have a rough idea of the path, take it and like uh, only user's action, player's actions uh, should result in various like movements, not some physics. Uh, math is much more precise than that matter. Uh, well, maybe it's harder to implement and maintain, but it's more precise. Uh, also for me, because I wrote <laughs> all the code, it's easier for me to extend it later. I'll show you in the end a couple of examples of what I mean. But if I want to add new 
features and new mechanics to the game. It's much easier when you have like uh, all the raw data. Uh, yeah, the downside is like we have to write everything ourselves, and you don't want to know how much time I've spent on writing all this. <clears throat> okay, um, let's start. First step is straightforward. <laughs> we connect charger with a player, draw a line between them, uh, um, and for now it's just two points. First one is charger, last one is player, and it actually will remain always the same. So. Charger will always be the first point, player will always be the last, and when we add new points, we'll add them in between of them, like before player, actually. Um, and yeah, of course, player moves, we update the coordinate of last point. Um, so how do we add new points? Uh, in first chapter, for the sake of simplicity, I'll be discussing with, like, in terms of how we implement it in uh, game jam version, I implemented it with colliders. Uh, so in code it's pretty easy. Um, it's I have some small circular colliders had in four corners, had long re rectangular colliders for all like each section of the wire, and it they update their like positions and rotation with the wire. And well, when uh, rectangular collider touches <laughs> circular collider, then we know that we touched corner, and we want to add a new point to the wire at the coordinates of that corner. So now probably it's pretty easy. Um, so um, we always add like <laughs> um, the new point before the last, uh, also before the player. And it's like, it's already looking good in terms of adding points. Of course, it doesn't look <laughs> good in terms of like adding. So it uh, looks like we're sticking. Uh, so now probably the next step should be we should like unsnap from the corners. Uh, let's take a look at this thing. Mm. Uh, that doesn't look good, because we have a small problem. It's point addition order. Because you see in the slide, there are several corners at the top in one horizontal line. And actually, it could be that in one frame, we just touch several corners at once. And we should know in which order should we actually touch them. So it's also here easy to understand that the corners should be like from the left to right. But in terms of code, it actually means uh, like we need to calculate the distance from the starting point to all the points that we crossed in this in the last frame. So, so uh, and and sort them by distance. First one is like the, short, the closest distance. Second one is the next, and third one is the furthest away from the starting pivot. And then, if we add them correctly, uh, let's take a look. Uh, yeah, now it f is fixed. So uh, we still can't unsnap, but at least we snap correctly and snap to the last point. It looks good. Uh, now we need to unhandle unsnapping uh, and understand what is unsnapping. Um, so if we take a look at my perfect images, we can also <laughs> uh, uh, probably understand visually what it means. So on the left image, we can see like if we bend around the corner, uh, we should remain snapped, but as soon as we move away from the corner, we should unsnap. So in code, it's just comparing like this, that angle between two sections, if it's like um, positive or negative, so counterclockwise or clockwise. And so we can see like when the angle is uh, positive or counterclockwise, we should just delete the last, this point that is like situated at the corner, and by deleting this point, we unsnap from the corner. So let's uh, take a look. So it, um, it it works now good, and now from the other, ooh, it doesn't work <laughs> good. Uh, well, problem is pretty small, so because we can approach actually any corner from two directions. We can approach, when we touch the corner, it can be on the right or on the left. And it's actually important, because if we flip the image, and so if we approach the corner from other side, like clockwise for unsnapping, or counterclockwise for unsnapping becomes clockwise. So what we also need to do in code is uh, uh, we need to, on, on colliding with the corner, we need actually also to store the side from which we touch the corner and use that to determine angle when what, that we need to unsnap, at which we need to, un to unsnap. Uh, so it, we will have such an, like, an array of like left, right, left, right, and then use it and uh, remove like left and right when we unsnap. Uh, so let's take a look, is it enough? Okay, actually yes, now it looks like a working like wire mechanic. 
and which I actually use in my Ludendare game Detour. So even it's it's even a bit better because I didn't during Luton there I didn't do like this uh, several points in one frame thing and I just didn't have enough time for that. Uh, but yeah, basic mechanic is already finished. Uh, I could have stopped here, but I like after after game jam I had lots of ideas on how to extend the game, like some other mechanics, and I knew I had it to go like a couple steps further. So yeah, let's continue with the next chapter. It's, yeah, moving blocks. Um, at, this, at the time when I started developing this advanced mechanic, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> uh, but I worked all the, all the way, I lost several brand sales along the way, and now I am ready to deconstruct my painful experience. This will, this will not be as a smooth ride as first chapter, so please buckle up and bear with me. Uh, let's just start without any list and, like, Play some uh, some like points along the way. So now I've just placed a uh, moving block to the thing, and I didn't change any code at all. So it doesn't look good because yeah, probably the first step is pretty obvious. Uh, if wire is touching some corner and corner is moving, let's just move uh, wire with the corner and see how it goes. Um, so yeah, now it's a bit better. But you can see the problem on the left. So uh, we check for those special like angles for unsnapping only for the last point before the robot, not for previous ones. Uh, so we actually need to check also all other previous sections of a wire and all other corners because they can be moving independently from player. And actually, after a couple of iterations of snapping and unsnapping, it's, it becomes a bit blurry what like left and right means. Uh, so to tell you the truth, at this point of development, I was already not happy with colliders. <laughs> uh, and actually, I didn't, uh, for the sake of presentation, in the first chapter, I implemented everything without colliders, because with colliders, it, it was also a bit jittery, because like colliders have some size, so it's like it jitters on snapping. For unsnapping, you needed some bigger angles than like zero, so it wasn't really good. So, um, so what could I do to like for this behavior to be more crisp and also to implement all this like stuff on, on previous like corners? Uh, let's just remove all colliders and use even more mass. Uh, so I introduced uh, um, so how do we convert all logic to pure mass? Um, well, the basics are already there. All corners are just two D points. All points in a wire are just two D points, and so. We need we have two arrays of two D points, and actually we just need to like calculate some relations between them. So how where everything is situated in relation to to everything else. So I call this stuff pivot relations because like pivots is like a corners pivots, and uh, these pivot relations describe where all corners are situated in relation to each section of a wire, like each two two like uh, neighbor points of wire. So let's break down what we see. Uh, two points are marked one and two, wire is going from bottom to top. And in terms of this section of wire from one to two, everything, like all the plane can be like separated in different ways. So first, like, first is left and right on the left picture. It's, I suppose, pretty obvious <laughs> what left and right is. So each, uh, yeah, each corner, each pivot is like either on the left or on the right of the wire. And also each pivot can be uh, like inside or outside of uh, uh, this section it's a bit like more complex, but it's like part of the plane that's directly to the left or to the right of the section, not like outside. You can see those two perpendiculars. Uh, that, um, uh, they're limiting this part of space that's inside. Um, so there is also a third thing about snapping because pivots could, could be actually also like in the same place as one or two. So in starting or end of this like section. It will not be used that much in my talk, but it's important in code, so I wanted to mention it. So yeah, uh, each, each frame I calculate all relations between all, all corners and all like uh, sections of wire, update them every frame, and what do we want to do with it? Um, actually, for snapping to the corner, we just want to catch when corner crosses from left-hand side to right-hand side, because it's like the time when it actually touches the wire. So. In code, I just recalculate everything. Um, I try to look for this, like from left hand side to right hand side, or of course from right hand side to left hand side, uh, and add a new point uh, without any colliders. Um, and notice also we have here like 
we know from which side we collided with the corner. So as like in the first chapter, we already know like what on the left or on the right the, the corner was. Uh, let's put all this to test and see how it goes. I've prepared a more complex moving playground on this one. Mm. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't work. Uh, why? Ooh, um, if I were to answer this question like in like all details, we would need probably a workshop for that. <laughs> but like the main problem, of course, it's like managing pivot relations. Because when we snap to a corner, we need to stop updating some relations. We also add a new relation. Some neighboring relations need to update just a little bit. When we delete some points, we also need to delete some relations, update neighboring relations, and. Um, yeah, so to cut a long story short, we need lots of conditional recalculations. Uh, so <laughs> so it, it, it's, it, it was like my logic at some point in time. Now it's just a bit easier, but it's like it has lots of conditions uh, depending like on different stuff. And I was tweaking for several months this, this stuff. Uh, but for now, it works seemingly fine. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so now let's take a leap of faith and assume everything works correctly. Uh, let's take a look. Does it work? Uh, are we there yet? Um, and yes and no. So you can see everything works fine. Uh, so technically, yes, we're done. Congratulations. Uh, but yeah, of course, it's more of a meme, you know, about drawing an owl. That like uh, it's about like uh, then draw the rest of the owl. <laughs> so uh, of course, but those two like points are like main points of this logic, but of course, there are many, many more problems I had to overcome. So just to state a couple of them, of course, I had infinite loops because uh, when like managing with such like complex stuff, of course, you'll have like, I need recalculations in the same frame when I'm adding points, removing points, so I needed to catch those places. Hopefully in the full release, nobody will see that screen, but for now it's there. Um, so also remember, like, let me move from here. When we catch like from left and side to right and side, imagine what in this, in the one frame we go from left and side to right outside diagonally. Like, did we touch the wire? Did we not touch the wire? Uh, it's a bit obscure, and like in the bottom image, you can see like I had problems with that arrows point like to strange behavior behavior, and what I actually then did, I recursively like cut in half all the movement in one frame, and uh, in that case I can be sure like if we touched or didn't touch the corner. Um, performance, performance is still not solved comple yet for completely for me. I still, I already like cache lots of stuff. I uh, try to not update stuff with stuff not moving, but yeah. Um, I am still every doing everything in JavaScript. Maybe I'll need to move to C Sharp at some point. I don't know. I'm not trying. I try not to think about it for now. And something more probably because I like uh, development is ongoing. As in, suffer of writing your own bizarre mini engine. Um, so I'll probably cut this epilogue because I'm. Probably so, but yeah. Uh, okay. I'll just go quickly through it because uh, this is a uh, like gear that can move some other blocks and. Uh, I just see like on which side of gear we are. I can I, I know the speed at which points are moving at the gear. I send that movement to the gear. Gear rotates and moves the blocks. So like because I have everything in code, like I can just take those speed of points and uh, send them directly. So I implemented it like one evening. So it was pretty easy. I didn't know how much time I would need if I like use some like physics engine and stuff like that. So there you have it. We deconstructed the wire behavior and even got a glimpse into developers' terrors without actually needing to solve everything for ourselves. Um, so uh, you'll probably like, can scan like uh, core code or like later in the uh, like you can take a look. It's not the latest version of the uh, code because I don't. I, I want to keep some of my secrets. But it, it was like at that point, as it worked 99% of the time, and it's pretty easy to like understand what what happens there. So if you're interested, you could take a look and analyze, understand. And okay, thank you for coming. This was actually yeah. So th this was actually my first public talk, so hope it went well. <laughs> uh, feel free to ask anything. If it's simple, I can answer it now. If it's more complex, you can catch me at open show area after lunch, probably. Uh, so, yeah. Um.
Yeah, thank you very much. I see some hands already up, and I will go be going. Uh, th thank you very much. Um, so, like in puzzle games, it's always like the mechanics influence the level design. How do you the trade off? Like you have an idea of like a mechanic, but then now you need to go through a painful process of making the thing to prototype it, or do you have an approach for prototyping, or how do you do it basically? Uh, well, for, uh, for first of all, about I'll try to answer this like, like quickly. Uh, first of all, if, if game mechanic doesn't like sparkle in my mind in one minute several levels i think it's not like a good mechanic so for now it's just like uh, if it hits me then i just like go for a couple of evenings like even probably without sleeping and implementing it i actually had have probably now more implemented mechanics that i just scrapped and lay like into is a beast because like i tried them it didn't work out was not as fun so it's just i i try out and see how it goes Debugging this must have been a nightmare. Do you have any tools or utilities that helped you to get through this dark night? That's actually a pretty good question because it's really hard to like visually debug a huge like 2D array of like it's like I don't know it can be 100 relations, 1,000 relations even more, and uh, no. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, for now it's just like I I visually like uh, code uh, like pop like wire points and uh, like corner points and I just encode uh, do some console logs and look at like numbers so it's a bit of pain I didn't come up with a good idea to debug it <laughs> thank you so much for that talk um, you have very nice visuals going on uh, have you done anything prior to Godot uh, and uh, game dev. So I've been a game developer like 10 years ago for a couple of years I did mobile games then like for six or seven years I was like constantly either didn't have time for game development or I tried some game engine and it didn't work out for me so I actually tried some like seven different game engines before Godot so but yeah I was like uh, trying and this year I started Godot and it just sparkled you know my like <laughs> game dev creativity I've already done something like seven games this year <laughs> so it's uh, yeah I hope that answers yeah. Uh, this isn't really related to the uh, relation stuff, but like, how did you handle the line texture thing? Like, I can see that it animates according to its length. Uh, it's like actually just repeating texture for line, nothing. So it's li line 2D has like texture ability. It's uh, I did like small texture of like white and uh, yellow stripe repeated, and so it's all built in. Okay, there was one more question, and we also have time. So after uh, you started with all the math, like it looked really complicated. Did you, like, uh, did you have the enough knowledge, enough math knowledge before you uh, changed the col uh, to from colli colliders to like uh, separate points? Did you have enough knowledge, or did you have to like uh, re? re-educate yourself about some subjects? Uh, well, I have a kind of good experience with like all math stuff because yeah, I attended some like the technical university. I did really good like in math, like in general throughout my life. So and it's actually a fun thing because sometimes I, I'm even more comfortable in implementing my own stuff rather than using some engines <laughs> like building uh, like even for a couple of my other games. So like for, I did uh, at Ludum Dare 54 like a game about moving uh, like your furniture around the like room and I knew that like in two days I wouldn't be able to like manage the built-in stuff, so I just <laughs> wrote all the interactions of like furniture and moving it around and all the mass. It's also lots of mass, so I am. I think I'm pretty confident with mass. It was still a pain. It was uh, just a bit out of my scope, just like you know, one step further. So it was a nice experience, but yeah. And actually, now after a couple of uh, months, I'm already you know. Sometimes I have a problem. And I have like, I don't know, uh, 300 lines of code and I can, even without debugging, look at how the problem looks and uh, like run it through my head and okay, I know the place where it is, go and fix it and it <laughs> is fixed, so it's pretty funny. Okay, um, with that, thank you very much.
Uh, <laughs>